the result of my study of Islamic eschatology, I have come to the conclusion that we now live in a world in which if you are not faithful in your worship of Allah and faithfully following Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam, then you will be worshipping Dajjal. There is no third option. I have come to the conclusion that the architect of the modern age is Dajjal. And I have come to the conclusion that most of mankind are already worshipping him. Meaning they have submitted to him. For example, Al-Azhar University does not teach international monetary economics. No. And the Darul Uloom that produce your ulama, they don't teach international monetary economics. And so how? Tell me how. Can your Maulana or your Mufti or your Sheikh or your Ustad or your whatever he is, how can he give fatwa concerning paper currency when he has not studied international monetary economics? They didn't have paper money in the time of the books of fiqh. Huh? Well, I have studied international monetary economics at two universities. And on the basis of my profound study of the subject, I have come to the conclusion that this paper currency is bogus, it's fraudulent, and it's haram. And you'd be surprised how many American academics and European academics agree with me. The only people who cannot agree with me are our scholars of Islam. And so Dajjal today controls the world of money. I have come to the conclusion that the modern secular state is the creation of Dajjal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declares in the Quran that he is Al-Malik. And in political terminology, that means the sovereignty belongs to him. Sovereignty belongs to him. And today you now have a creature called the modern secular state. And those who defend it have not even studied sufficient political science to understand its genesis, its origin. And the modern secular state, which has embraced the whole world, declares that no, sovereignty does not belong to Allah. Sovereignty now belongs to the state. Well, whoever wants to accept that and believe in it and act upon it should have the freedom to do so. And when they go to the grave, they must be prepared for the consequences of that. That's all. But the rest of us would say, no. We want to remain faithful to Allah and to his messenger. And so in our hearts, we long for the return of the Khilafah. The Khilafah state, which recognizes Allah's sovereignty. This is our heart. In your heart, you may pledge allegiance to that state. In our heart, we pledge allegiance to the Khalifa. That's the economic aspect, that's the monetary aspect, that's the political aspect. But Dajjal is testing us in other ways as well. The Prophet said alayhi salatu wasalam that the last people to come out to Dajjal would be women. And a man would have to return to his home and tie down, meaning coercively restrain his wife, his sister, his daughter, to protect them from being seduced by Dajjal. We recognize that to be the modern feminist, Western feminist revolution, which is now seeking to establish its base in Muslim society as well. We know 
we will recognize that feminist revolution when it comes. The last people to come out to Dajjal will be women. How would you recognize it? He said women would be dressed and would yet be naked. So when you see women dressed and yet naked, there's the evidence. These are the last people to come out to the job. Some people would be annoyed with the Prophet for speaking like this. <laughs> yes. He said that women would dress like men. So you see them with a jacket and a trousers. And if you go to McDonald's, you see them with a tie as well. And some people would be annoyed with the Prophet. Yes, annoyed with him. For exposing this fraud. Why would women want to dress like men? Why? They don't know. So I have to tell them why. The answer is Dajjal wants to disrupt and overturn, turn upside down the functional role of men and women in society. Allah ordained one thing and mankind recognized it all through history that men had a functional role in society different from women. That men were supposed to work and to maintain women. And that men were supposed to guard and protect women. And as a consequence of which women were obliged to be obedient. Obedient to their husbands, obedient to their guardians. Dajjal contests that. Dajjal does not want to hear anything about women being obedient to their husbands. No, 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 that belongs to an old age that's gone. This is the new age. This is an age of enlightenment. This is an age where there is no discrimination. And so women don't have to be obedient to their husbands. Wake up to the modern world. Which one? The modern age of Dajjal. <laughs>